Thank you everyone for coming. We are joined today on National Signing Day by head coach Sean Lewis, who will start us off with an opening statement. Well, first and foremost, thanks for everyone being here and celebrating this great day with us. Uh, it's a special day for Kent State University and our Flash Fast family to welcome the new members of, of our team and of our family to campus. Uh, I, I need to take a moment and thank everyone who, who made this possible, everyone who was involved in the process of bringing these families to campus on such short notice, getting our facilities prepared uh, from the maintenance people on staff to all the administrators, the professors, the support staff, and, and of course, our coaching staff for working diligently for the past four weeks really the past 41 days to, to bring a top tier class to our program you know at the end of the day uh, we signed nine players out of what we affectionately call the, the state of Kent which are our primary areas of Ohio uh, Pennsylvania the DMV and, and Detroit uh, we also went international and, and signed a young man out of Canada uh, at the end of the day we finished with the fifth ranked recruiting class in the MAC which is quite a feat for our staff and our family here because the day that we took over we were the 12th ranked recruiting class in the MAC uh, also proud on a national level because we are a, a national university that's going to compete on a national stage uh, we had a top 100 ranked recruiting class in the nation which is no small feat and, and again something that the hard work that everyone put in with the staff myself and, and everyone most importantly uh, on the university and on campus uh, to make that happen so this was not done without them and, and is something that we are very very proud of um, and you guys have the information about each one of these young men and I'm sure you guys have your questions so without further ado we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> Fire or win ready. Right. What was what was the the things you were looking for in certain players when you were out recruiting over the last month and a half, pretty much? Yeah, I mean the the biggest thing is that we're finding young men and families that match our cultural beliefs and our cultural values. So the the immediate measurables and the athletic skill sets jump out. I mean everyone wants guys that are bigger, faster, stronger, more athletic, have more length. Um, and they're always looking to improve their roster in that way. We're no different. We want more size, we want more length, we want more speed. And with the gentleman that we signed, we did get that. The, the difficult part about this was that in the short time frame that we had, if we identified new prospects that we weren't recruiting at previous institutions from all of our staff was the evaluation of if the character, if the person, if the family was a match. Usually you have a full year plus to go through that evaluation process. Um, so we were looking for the, the similar values that we, we care about a lot about, right? Does a kid enjoy playing football? Does he have a passion for the game? Is he someone that you can coach and hold accountable? Is he smart both on and off the field? The, the young man that signed that signed today, their combined overall GPA is right around a 3.0. So these kids do not just excel on the football field, but they're bright young men as well. You know, and are they mentally and physically tough? Those are things that we care very deeply about, and those are the things that we are evaluating in a hurry. Um, and the staff did a tremendous job getting that information in a short period of time. Was the expectation, even with like this short turnaround, the recruitment to get one of the top five recruiting classes in the MAC you just talked about? going from 12th to 5th, was that an expectation to get that type of talent in that short amount of time? The expectation is to be the best. It's always to be the best, and we won't settle until we are the best. Like you said, you were uh, signing recruits from all over the country and even one from Canada. Is that something you can sort of, uh, we can sort of expect as something that you're going to do is go all around the country? You know, this class was a little bit unique because of the timing of my hire and, and with this being the first year of the early signing period. So the early signing period happened on December 20th and we were able to you know, sign some players then. We signed three young men during that time um, in Javon Williams, in Ishmael Robinson, and in Craig Elmore. And when those young men signed, so did about 85% of the rest of the 2018 prospects. So we had to go and we had to find of the roughly 15% of the other prospects that were still available, who were the best fit for us. So we cast probably a little bit wider net this time around um, because of the the, the time crunch that we had going forward, we're really going to look to dominate the five and a half, six hour radius at home here, first and foremost. It's one of the great things about this job is that we're in a the dominant state with great high school programs, with great high school players, and we're going to take care of home first and foremost. And then if you could kind of imagine when you throw a, a stone in a pond and the ripple effect that happens, you start at home and as you ripple out, we'll continue to go wider and wider and wider and go to people and coaches that we trust and know 
So as we're getting the information and we're doing our evaluations, we know that it's good, solid information so it's the right fit for our program, our university, our community. Question from Alan Moff, who couldn't make it today because you talked about your two quarterbacks, and is it an open competition? It is an open competition. Yep, you know, Woody Barrett was a young man that I knew about from way back when, when the transition happened uh, when I was going to Syracuse, and it just happened to work out that uh, he was available when this transition came about. Um, he was one of the first young men to, to get to campus, to have a belief in what we were doing, and, and to, to jump on board. He's currently enrolled in classes here and competing each and every single day to, to better his best. Um, Marquez, you know, is a young man who, who comes from a, a, a very talented program down in Florida as well. Um, and I expect each and every one of our kids, not just at the quarterback position, but to compete daily. And, and everything that they get from playing time to apparel to the, beverage, the, the privileges of, of being on this team will be earned, and it will be earned daily. You signed two, uh, two junior college kids. With, did you realize that those were positions of need whenever you came in? You had to get someone to come in and play right away at those two positions, running back and quarterback? Yeah, I mean, there, there were just positions that we felt that we could bolster competition and that there were players that were above the line, so to speak, that we knew that they were high-quality players, and if we could get them in the program, that we'd be better for it in the long run. Not necessarily that they were high-priority positions of need to where if we did not get them, we would not be able to be successful, but having them on our roster, we would be better for it. Question from Elton Alexander. Uh, can you talk about your two offensive linemen in the group, and are you still – yeah, so the, the two young men, uh, Julian Sams is a, a not only a, an offensive lineman, but also a wrestler who, who just plays second in districts, if I'm not mistaken, is advancing to regionals this weekend. So he's a long, athletic kid with growth potential that we are very, very excited about. Um, and the other offensive lineman is, is Zach Whaley from Minnesota, who uh, when you watch a lot of his tape, he's primarily a defensive lineman, but again, he has the length, the size, and strength that we are looking for, and the athletic ability to, to move and play at all three levels, whether it be dominating at the line of scrimmage or blocking at level two or climbing and finding the DB to punish at level three. A couple of the uh, recruits on the defensive side of the ball that are interesting to me is uh, Connor Parks and Montre Mel Miller. Could you uh, talk about them a little bit? So again, Connor Parks was a young man that was from the Central Florida area, which is a kid that we knew about during the transition that I had some, some time with uh, to get to know. So he was one of those young men that from a evaluation standpoint of a character standpoint, we knew more about. So we felt comfortable with him. And it just happened to work out again with his recruitment that when we made the transition, he was open and he was available. And we battled against different schools and eventually got him on campus. And he selected us over other opportunities. Uh, he knew that this was the best fit for him and he expressed you know the loyalty that our staff showed him during the transition and that we were there from start to finish was a, a big factor in that decision uh, Montre Miller is a young man that is very versatile has electric speed um, and, and will be on the defensive side of the ball for us and, and will be able to walk up and challenge receivers and, and you know deny easy passes and and, and really be a, a lockdown DB in the back end for us so from Alan, if you could kind of just talk about your young staff and the energy they seem to be bringing through social media and through some of the different things you guys seem to be doing, kind of like uh, this morning every time you announce the play. Well, I, I mean, we enjoy what we're doing, and we have a lot of fun. Uh, it's our personalities coming through. I think social media is a great tool when used properly, so it's a way that we can really kind of pull back the curtains a little bit and, and, and provide not only our fans and, and uh, our football team and the prospects that we're recruiting, but the community of Kent State, uh, the sort of energy and excitement that we have to come to work each and every single day. And it's something that we are really, really proud of to be sitting here at Kent and at, in Kent, you know, at Kent State University. Um, and because of that, we want to share that with everyone. Um, you know, I, a lot of people have made uh, and a lot of reference about my age, my staff's age, and everything. At the end of the day, we're all prepared to do this job, and we're working to prove each and every single day that we're we're ready for the opportunity, and, and hopefully the results, kind of day in and day out, if we continue to better ourselves and better our team, you know, they, they will come at the end of the day. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys.